Rebuilding the Ford 68A Distributor. All information referred in this video will come from the Ford Chassis Parts and Accessory Catalog, also known as the Bible for early Fords. Section 1, Disassembly. Step 1, Removing the Vacuum Advance Brake. Loosening and removing the Vacuum Advance Adjustment Cap. Along with the tension spring. Gently use a screwdriver to slide the piston brake out. Inspect the piston brake for damage and wear. Do the same for the adjustment cap. When inspecting the adjustment cap, check the underside to make sure that the spring tension plate is intact. Make sure the tension spring is in good shape. This is the vacuum advance assembly and its corresponding part numbers. Step 2. Removing the advanced degree indicator plate and lock nut. With a screwdriver or wrench, loosen and remove. This is the advanced degree indicator plate, lock nut, and its corresponding part numbers. Step 3. Removing the mechanicals from the distributor housing and disassembly. By holding the base of the housing and using your fingers to push on the inside base of the breaker plate and the points, the mechanicals should start to slide out of the housing. Next, do a visual inspection for damage and wear, also checking that the rotor spins freely. Now remove the rotor, check the drive shaft for heat damage and that it is not bent in any way. If the rotor is in good shape and you're thinking of reusing it, make sure to check the guide slot on the rotor and that it still has a flat edge that locks itself in place on the drive shaft prevent it from spinning freely during operation. Here's a good rotor on the left with a good flat edge and a bad one on the right that is worn. This is the rotor part number. Remove the lock ring from the breaker plate. Then gently use the screwdriver to remove the breaker plate from the base of the distributor. Next, remove the drive shaft and look at the base where the centrifugal advance weights are located and you will find the model number on the side of the weights. You will also find the model number on the bottom of the drive shaft keyway. Now remove the lock ring on the drive shaft above the cam to remove the centrifugal advance weights from the drive shaft. You can now slide the centrifugal weights off the drive shaft and once again do a visual inspection for heat and bending damage. This is the drive shaft part number. We are now going to remove the guide plates from the centrifugal advance weights by using a screwdriver to remove the lock ring. Once again do a visual inspection of the weights for movement and that the bearings are not worn out and move freely. This is the centrifugal advance assembly and its corresponding part numbers. Step 4. Disassembly of the breaker plate. Unscrew the left point contact spring from the breaker plate. Next, use needle nose pliers to remove the cotter key from the point. Watch out that you don't lose the washer. Repeat this step for the points on the right side. Next, remove the tall and short screw holding the left point adjustment arm.
you should now be able to remove the left adjustment arm off the breaker plate. Repeat this step for the points on the right side. Again, do a visual inspection of the breaker plate for damage and wear. This is the breaker plate, points, and its corresponding part numbers. Section 2, Assembly of the Ford 68A Distributor. Step 1, Assembly of the Breaker Plate. First, place the left and right adjustment arm points on the breaker plate. Next, apply a little grease on the post that the spring points pivot on. Now place the left and right spring points on the breaker plate post. Now place a brass washer on top of the left and right fiber arm of the point. Next, insert the cotter key in the post to lock the points in place. Now install the left and right stop screws at the front of the breaker plate by hand. The stop screws act as a lock for the points and a bumper to stop the points from swinging too far back or floating while the engine is running at a high RPM. Next install the left and right lock screws in the back of the breaker plate. These screws act as a lock for the points. Do not tighten these screws all the way yet, just snug. Do this to the stop screws also. Now we're going to secure the springs of the point to the positive coil mounting point of the breaker plate. These screws can be tightened and secured now, but do not over tighten these screws. Now make sure the adjustment screw to adjust the points moves freely. This is the screw that you will use to adjust the dwell of the points. Step 2. Before you start assembling the centrifugal advance weights and breaker plate into the distributor housing, you should check both the top housing and bottom cup bushings for wear and damage. If needed, replace the bushings or find a good use top housing and or bottom cup. Although we disassembled the centrifugal advance weights in section one, we are not going to show the reassembly. We really wanted to show you all the pieces and how it works. If you can tell the centrifugal advance weights need replacing, you should just find a better used centrifugal advance weight. Before you install the centrifugal advance weights into the bottom cup of the distributor, and after a thorough cleaning, you should inspect the drive shaft cam for wear and damage. Next, make sure the centrifugal advance weights move freely, and finally, inspect the drive shaft key crank for wear, damage, and that the oil galleries are clean. Now install the centrifugal advance weights into the bottom cup. Check to make sure that the centrifugal advance weights spin freely. Next, install the breaker plate on top of the centrifugal advance weights, making sure to align the advanced degree adjustment to fit in the bottom of the cup. The breaker plate should almost snap into place when aligned correctly. Take the breaker plate lock ring and insert it into the bottom cup groove, locking the breaker plate to the bottom cup.
Now match up the notch on the drive shaft and the rotor, sliding them together, making sure that the rotor is seated all the way down on the drive shaft. Step three, before you install the distributor into the housing, do a visual inspection for any damage or cracks on the housing. Next, locate the guide slot on the bottom of the distributor housing that will line up with the guide pin of the bottom cup. Now go ahead and assemble them together. If the housing and the bottom cup are having problems fitting together, don't force them. You need to check that the drive shaft is aligning with the distributor housing top bushing. If they are not aligning, the drive shaft might be bent. If you force them together, you're not going to get a very good dwell reading, or one that's true. Step four, you can now install the coil. Make sure that you have a gasket that fits your coil, the positive contact spring is clean, and the carbon contact has good spring tension. When you place the coil on the housing, make sure the positive and carbon contacts are aligned and making good contact. Now you can screw the coil down to the distributor housing. Step five. The last step is to install the advanced degree indicator plate on the distributor housing, making sure that the notches on the indicator face the zero degree on the distributor housing. You are now ready to set the dwell on the distributor.